Welcome to Lesson 1, Google Spreadsheet Basic Tutorial for Absolute Beginners. In this lesson, you will learn how to get things started in Google Sheets. We'll talk about basic formatting, commonly used formulas, cell referencing, and how to sort and filter. So here's how you can get started using Google Spreadsheets or Google Sheets. So first, all you have to do is go to your Google Drive, and the link is drive.google.com. And you have to be logged into your Google account for you to be able to access your Google Drive. So this is how it looks like. Uh, it looks like whenever you try to, uh, whenever you access your Google Drive. <clears throat> so there are several ways for you to create a spreadsheet. Either you create a black sheet, or you can create a sheet from a template of Google Spreadsheet. So I'll show you how. If you can see this button here, the plus button with the word new, you just have to click on it. You'll see folder, file upload, folder upload, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, or more. So just hover your mouse over to Google Sheets and you will see there are two options. Either you start from a black spreadsheet or from a template. But before we go to the black spreadsheet, let me show you how or let me show you some of the some useful templates from Google Sheets that you can use. So, and click that and see from a template, and a new tab will be opened to show you some of the templates available with Google Spreadsheets. And this is very useful, especially if you don't have an idea on how to create a spreadsheet, maybe for your to-do list, your budgeting schedule, planner, and so on. So here, coming spread, I mean, coming spreadsheet, the templates that you can use. You just have to choose which one could be very convenient for you. So we have a to-do list, budgeting, calendar schedule, planner for work. If you need an invoice, you can use the invoice template. We also have your timesheet, financial statements by zero. Um, it was a template from zero, and this one is from QuickBooks. Reports, CRMs, there you go. Purchase orders. We also have the gap chart, <coughs> timeline tracking. Yeah. For school, if you're a teacher, you can use their sheets, their, their template for attendance, grade book, and assignment there. So, the bank that makes templates that you can use to make it easier for you if you would like to create um, something from Google Spreadsheet. Yeah. And um, that's for the template part. But if you're going to create from scratch, all you have to do is just click on this plus button that has a black And immediately, you can do Okay. New spreadsheet, untitled spreadsheet. Another option, let's say that you came from Google Drive and immediately you would like to start creating a black spreadsheet. Again, you just go to New, just click on it, over your mouse over to Google Sheets, and then Black Spreadsheet. It will open a new tab for an uh, 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 untitled spreadsheet that you can start using. There you go. So this is how a spreadsheet looks like. The first thing that you have to consider whenever you're creating a spreadsheet is to name it. Because the default one is a titled spreadsheet. So you have to name it and it depends on the purpose of your spreadsheet. If the spreadsheet is a report, then let's say it's a monthly, a weekly, a quarterly, or a yearly report, then you can put it there. 2018 annual report or Q4 uh, report, 2018 something. For this example, let's just put lead playlist. Yeah, so you're able to <coughs> rename it. You just have to click on it, double click, or just click on the name if you would like to rename it. As easy as that, and then you just press enter afterwards. Ang kagandahan kasi nito si spreadsheet, since you're doing it on a cloud-based platform, everything that you do online is saved immediately. You don't have to um, save it manually, like you save the on its own. So as you can see, they're all changes saved in your drive. Anything that you do or undo is automatically saved for you. That's how um, useful it is. Because if you would compare it to Excel, Excel you can do it offline, you can use it, or, I mean you can do it on your computer. However, you would need to always save it to make sure that any changes that you make has been saved to your work. Okay. So that's for Google Spreadsheet. So first, you need to name the sheet, and then let's be familiar with the menu bar here. Because there are a lot of functions that you might not be familiar of, which we will go into detail in the following lessons. But for now, let's just be familiar of some of the menus 
So dito sa file, you can see here the options for you to share, to open a new or create a new um, file. It could be a document, a spreadsheet, a presentation, a form, or a drawing, or from a template. You can open a file, import, make a copy. Um, you can download this spreadsheet as maybe an Excel file, an open document format, PDF file, a web page file, CSV or comma separated, or TSV tab separated file. We will go into detail. Um, you can send this in an e as an email attachment. You can check the version, the changes done to this spreadsheet. You can rename it here. This is the longer way to rename this um, spreadsheet file. You can move it to a different folder, move it to trash, publish to the web. Um, you can check the document details, the spreadsheet settings, or you can print it, print it immediately. So edit naman, you can undo and redo, cut, copy, paste. You can you can paste it in a special way, like you want just the values to be pasted, the format, or the um, formula, except the borders, something like that. There. Find and replace, delete values. You can delete row one, column, and there you go. Um, there is an option for you to, to add a note there, so if you can see here below, you can clear the notes. Remove checkbox. Okay. So view naman, you can freeze or increase a paint or a row or column. Ko kung gaano ka useful yan later on. You can show the grid lines, which is your ito yung preset niya, it's shown. Pero if you antik mo, mo yan, ganito mo yan, yung makikita yung grid lines. There. So yeah. Pag nakatik yung grid lines, makikita mo siya. Protected ranges, you have the formula bar. If you would like to know the formula for that specific um, cell, show formulas. Zoom in or out. Here. And what else? Here. Full screen, if you would like to see the full screen. So insert, you can insert whatever is available to be inserted in the sheet, like a row, a column, a cell, a chart, an image, drawing form, functions or formulas, a link, a checkbox, which is a new, a feature of spreadsheet, comment, note, and view sheet. Okay. So, the, the format naman the number, um, how you are going to format that specific <coughs> cell. Kung gusto mo na plain text lang siya, number, lang siya, percentage, currency, it's a date, a time, or whatever. You would like it to be bold, italic, clear line, strike through. Actually, makikita mo na siya dito sa bar na to. Or you can also check it in the form. Alignment, textual pigmentation, conditional formatting, alternative colors, clear color. We will be using all of this so that you you will know how important they are. I say there are specific um, criteria or there are specific situations whenever you create a spreadsheet that you will use not all but most of these menus. So data, you'll be able to sort and filter data validation, pivot table, you can create a pivot table, name ranges, Split text to columns, you can group and group. So tools, you can create a form, there, spelling, and so on. And then add-ons. Add-ons, these are super similar to Chrome extensions. So, sa Chrome extension, di ba, kapag clinic siya, wherever you are, you can create or use it. You can also do the same with add-ons. Pag gumamit ka ng add-ons, specific sa function, <clears throat> pagka-click mo, magagamit mo siya within Google Spreadsheet. Kunwari, there's an add-on search for duplicates. <clears throat> so all you have to do is just click on the add-on and it, it will work its magic. And if you have, um, you're having any difficulties using spreadsheet or maybe you don't remember what specific formula you need to use for a, for maybe, kung may gusto kong gawin pero hindi mo alam formula, you can use the help tab and search using the keywords that you use. Yeah. So just be familiar with these menus. Because they are very useful, as well as this part here. Yes, the uh, menu. Bar. We'll be using them in detail as we go on to our list. But familiarity, of course, is important. There. So, if you can see here, <clears throat> dito sa horizontal line ito, um, they are actually alphabetically aligned, or yung order nila is alphabetical from A to Z. And that's how they name a column. So each column is named by a letter. So the first column is, we call it column A. The second column is column B. The third column is column C, and so on. However, if you can see this vertical line here, puro siya numbers, ang preset niyan is 1 to 1,000. And that's how they name 
rows. So the first row is row 1, the second row is row 2, the third row is row 3, and so on. Ganyan po ang naming ng columns. Eh. So sa column, we name it by letters, and sa row, we name it by numbers. And that's how we can also reference a cell. Okay, a cell, ito siya. Ito ang naka-highlight ng blue as a cell. Ayan. Kung makikita mo yan, naka-highlight ng blue, yan ang cell. Ayan, yung naka-box na yan. Cell yan. Each one is a cell. And for you to reference a cell, it's helpful that you know the column as well as the root. So, ang pagpakangalan po natin sa cell is column first and then row second. So, column, kung nara ito, column B, row 2. So, this cell, the name of this cell is B2. Okay. Let's try another one. So, for example, let's go here. This column is column C and it's row 4. So, the name of this particular, this specific cell is C4. Okay. It's important that you know how to reference the cell, especially kapag gagamit na tayo ng form. But it's super easy. All you have to do is just the basic on the name of the, row, the column first and then the, the row. So, kung nari si ito, column E, row 4. So, the name of this cell is E4. Okay. That's how you reference a cell. Super easy, right? And that's how you get started. Um, since Google Sheets or Google Spreadsheets is super similar with Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel, para, we have what we call sa Excel workbook, di ba? So as a whole, ang isang Excel file is a workbook. Similar din po siya sa, sa Google Spreadsheet. Pag nag-click ka ng new dito at mag-start ka ng Google Spreadsheet, you are creating a workbook. And within that workbook, you have spreadsheets. Ang isa, pag gumagawa ko ng spreadsheet or Google spreadsheet, similar with creating a, an Excel file, as a, uh, whenever you create one, as a whole, a whole, you are creating a workbook. Okay. And within that workbook, we have what we call worksheets. So if you look at the lower portion, you can see here sheet 1. This is the first worksheet. And you can create as many worksheets as you need. And for you to be able to create a new one, you can see here the plus button. You just have to click on it. And immediately it will create another sheet for you. So it's up to you. Kung nari gusto mo siyang gusto mo yung specific para madali mo pa identify where she is, then you can rename it. There are two options for you to rename it. Either you can click itong down arrow na to and you can press rename to rename it. Or the easier part is just to double click sheet 1. Pagka double click mo, mga highlight siya and you can immediately um, you can immediately read it. So for example, you can read it as C11. And there are also other options for you. For example, you would like to delete this specific worksheet. You just have to... Ang daming options kasi dito sa bottom nito. So pag click mo niya, you can delete that worksheet. You can duplicate. You can copy this worksheet to a different Google spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet workbook. You can rename it as you please. If you would like to maybe color code, kunwari priority one siya, kaya gusto mong makita na nakalit kasi prior one, something like that, ganito yung lalabas. May line dyan, red. Or if orange or yellow, or if not, you can raise it. You can hide it and then you can move it. The easier for, way for you to move it is just to hold and drag there. Gusto ba siyang ilipat na maging, ano, dito siya sa second tab. And you can do the same with your next sheet. So that's how you read and you um, manage your worksheets within Google Spreadsheet. Another very important uh, feature of Google Spreadsheet is the sharing option. Um, that's why it is very important for you to be familiar with Google Spreadsheet because it's a cloud-based cloud -based platform. Show. So everything is saved online. And at the same time, you can easily collaborate any changes that you make to your client. But what if you would like to send, you are creating a, uh, a report spreadsheet and you would like it to, to be sent to your client, then you can send it immediately. And that's the use of the sharing options. So I want you to look at the upper right hand corner with the word share on it. Um, um, preset po niyan is naka-private only. 
So, ibig sabihin, ako lang po, pwede ko ma-access nito, file na ginawa ko. And there are ways for you to share it to your client or to the person you need to be shared. Maybe a teammate, kunwari kung, kung teacher ka and maybe would like to share it to your, to your students, if it's their online attendance, then there are ways for you to do it. So, let's try to pakialaman natin yung share button dito para makita nyo yung mga difference and how powerful you are whenever you're giving access to someone else. That's the feature of this share button. So, if you can see, there are ways for you to share it to the people you need to share this uh, file. So, you can share it maybe via sending as an email. So, you just have to enter the email address. Dari, dari, email address you then. Pag nalagay ko ng address you then, I can also add a note kunari, um, to my client. This is um, the annual report or the quarterly report, Q4 2018 report. Please check, blah, 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 blah. And then you can send. And you can also give them the power that they need or that you want to give them. If you just want that person to view this file, then you can set the settings to can view. Kung gusto mo naman na ma-view nila at saka mag-iwan sila ng comment for you to update whatever you need to update, then you can choose can comment. However, if you would like them to edit, then you can choose can edit. Okay. That's the first option. The second option is for you to create a link. Link of this spreadsheet na pwede mo iset sa, sa mga tao. So, the first one is to send it via email. You can send it to as many emails as you want email addresses as you want. And the second option is to create a link. So, ito po, pag mag-create ka ng, pag clinic mo yung get shareable link, mag-immediately, mag-create siya ng link. So, all you have to do, to do is copy the link and you can send it via email, via messaging, kung ano bang messaging platform na ginagamit nyo. So, they can immediately access the file. And there are also sharing options here. You can you have the control to give what power you want to give to them. If you want them to just edit to just view the file that can view, can comment or can edit. There. And more, e ganito pong lalabas. So kapag may li link ang si ang pag gumawa pag generate ka kasi ng link. Pwede na anyone on the internet can access your file pag public on the web. However, kapag ang pinili mo, anyone with the link. So, kahit sino na merong link, pwede nila ma-access yung file. Ang, ang pinili mo naman specific people, people, then, any people na pinili mo to have access, sila lang ang magkaka-access ng sa file. So, that's the difference between the two. So, for example, gusto mo na specific people lang, then, then I suggest you choose ito, yung lower portion i-indicate mo na lang dyan or ilagay mo lahat dyan yung email addresses ng taong gusto mong mag-access dun sa ginawa mong spreadsheet. Pero, kung gusto mo naman na anyone who has, who has the link can access or can view your spreadsheet, then ito, link sharing. Anyone with the link can view. So, those are the two options for you. Either you can share it to anyone which is the link or just the specific Super maganda kasi to kapag nagko-collaborate ka. Kasi, for example, you have created a report, you sent it to your to your client, and your client viewed the report, they want to make some changes, they want you to make some changes, or for example, they want you to continue the report. Kunwari, ang nagawa mo report is for Q1. Tinagay mo siya dito sa sheet 1, Q1. Gusto nila gumawa ka ng ano, report for Q2. Sa similar, sa isang spreadsheet na. 2018 report. Kunwari Gusto nilang makita lahat ng quarterly report sa isang spreadsheet. So, makikita nila for Q1, for Q2. So, they can see it in just one specific spreadsheet. That's how powerful this is because it's easier for you to collaborate everything. Everything that you've done or everything that you are doing to your team or to your client. There you go. And also, you're able to upload files to your Google Drive. Upload Excel files and they will be they will be converted to Google Spreadsheets. But before you do that, I want you to 
check the settings of your Google Drive. Itong nakikita mong tornillo dito, you just have to press on it, it's the settings. And ang preset kasi niya sa convert upload, hindi siya nakatick. Kapag hindi siya nakatick or hindi naka-check naka yung box na yan, pag in-upload mo ang isang Excel file sa Google Spreadsheet, ay may sa Google Drive, hindi mo siya ma-open as Google Spreadsheet. Mag-review mo lang siya as Let's, I want you to see the difference. Let me try, let me try uploading something here. Let's try to look for a file that we can upload. <clears throat> so for example, let me show you the settings. Ito yung preset settings niya, hindi naka-check yan. And I'll upload here an Excel file. There. So if you can see, iba yung button niya. And then, this one and this one, these are Google Spreadsheet, yung pagkaka-format. However, for this one, it's an Excel file. And whenever I double-click on it, ganito na yung magpapakita. I cannot edit or do anything. I can just view it as is. However, if you change the settings na may naka-check to, ibig sabihin, whatever you upload, it will be converted to a Google Drive file. Kunwari, kung Google Document mo siya, it's Google Docs. If it's Google Spreadsheet, it will become a Google Spreadsheet. Convert it here. Let's see the difference. Didilit ko to, and let me try uploading it. So, pag-upload, ito na siya. Similar na yung format niya. And whenever I double-click on it, immediately, I will be running to a spreadsheet. Ganyan na siya as a spreadsheet. So immediately, it's a spreadsheet and you can start working on it as usual. So that's how you get started with Google Sheets or Google Spreadsheets. Okay, so this time what we are going to talk about is formatting or basic formatting. I already have here a sample that we're going to work on. Just click on it. I named it this list. So this is a list of leads. Pero mga ano ko lang to, mga ginawagawa ko lang to. I'm not really sure if, uh, ang tawag doon, they are really existing. Pero kung co-incidental man na existing sila, um, it was not intentional. So this is the hmm, sample data that we're going to work on. And I'll show you what are the basic formattings that you can use for Google, for Google Spreadsheet. Especially if you're going to send this list over to your client. Of course, you want it to be, you want it to be aesthetically, diba? Yung parang maganda na siya siya. Worth reading. Saka mas, mad mas madali ma-identify, mabasa. That's why it's important for you to really do some kind of basic formatting now. Not really that complicated na format. Parang yung ma <coughs> masasabi mo lang talaga na this is a report. This is um, yung hindi sila malilito pag pinasa nila. Because right now, it just looks like this. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't really need to make it super fancy. However, you are still sending an output to your client. So, you need to always send an output na yung quality niya is super, alam mo yung hindi standard quality. Parang 5-star quality mo pala. Parang let me give an example by showing you a template. When, wherever you are, kahit siguro nag-aaral ka pa, whenever you, resend, you send a project, you make it look nice before you send it. Hindi lang yung basta-basta na lang na ginawa mo lang para lang may ma-send ka, pero you make it look nice for your client. Let me see. Let's see just an example. Uh... For example, we have an expense report. It doesn't have to be very fancy looking. However, you really need to format it para okay naman siya dito. Hindi masakit sa mata ko pa na. Hindi rin nakakalito. Kasi if you see this, as of now, konti, konti pa lang yung data. Imagine if you're going to send a lead list of 1,000 leads. Tapos ganyan lang yung pagkakaformat mo sa kanya. It doesn't look good. It looks confusing and it's overwhelming to the eyes. So you also have to consider how your output looks like. So it's important that we know and we apply the basic formatting that we can use in Google Spreadsheets.
So uh, right now, I have here the basic data for a lead list. Just a sample lead list. So I have here the name, just the first name, the email address, um, the company title, the income, and the age. So ganyan na yung itsura niya right now. Not, nothing really fancy. It's so boring to look at it. It doesn't look good. <laughs> yes. So let's try to make it look nicer. And I have here um, some formats that I want you to check as well. Especially if you are putting a, a title or a header before your data. So as you can see, these are the main data for your list. And dito sa first row, these are your headers. So, para mas ma-identify na this, are the, this, this is the header, then let's make it, let's highlight it para it looks like a header. Kaya, it's, it's similar than whenever you make a document. Yung title niya, di ba? Nasa taas siya, siya yung pinakamalaki, siya yung nakabold. So, similar din dito. Let's make it bold. Yan. Para mas ma-identify na, this, this, are, this is the header of your data. And then we can also use what we call the alternating colors. So it looks nice. Let's highlight our data. And then, format. If you want to format, go to alternating colors. There you go. And you are, you are able to choose the formatting style that you want to. So if you prefer blue, and dark blue, or green, Lighter green, something. So I would choose dark gray, and then you can also customize it. So for the header, this is the fill, yung fill niya na color, and then for the alternator, yung mga alternative colors, yung color one, and then yung color. Yeah. So you can choose or yung preset. Pink, yellow, red. So you can choose. Yeah. So it looks different. Now. And then after that, we can also change how they're formatted. Diba naka bold na siya? Since this is the header, mas maganda kasi kapag naka, yung alignment niya is naka gitan. So as you can see, ito, itong button na to, this is your choice for how you would like the alignment to look like. So if it's um, left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned. For the header, I highly recommend na center aligned siya. Uh, it looks neat. Yeah, that's the right term. It looks neat. It doesn't have to look fancy as long as it looks neat and clean. Para it's easier. Aesthetically, hindi siya overwhelming. Tignan, kapag sinend na kayo. Next one is, if you're going to look at it, um, although pareho sila ng width and height, some of the data, hindi mo makikita yung complete um, information niya. Not unless you go to the specific cell, dun mo lang makikita na, ay, ito pala, highway works, LX. So we have to adjust. I-adjust natin yung width, yung kapal ng column. So for column, kung column A, pwede mo namang liitan yung column konti kasi konti lang, maliit lang naman siya. And then for column B, since hindi natin makita na, you can just adjust. So makikita mo dito, pagka-hover mo ng mouse mo dito sa side na to, makikita mo yung arrow na pagka-opposite arrow, then you are able to adjust the width. So you just have to drag, and there you go. Yeah. Di ba mas maganda tignan, nakikita lahat ng information. Similar with column C, the company, we want to see all. So let's just adjust here. The title of the person or their position. Okay. Income and rate, especially the age. It looks neat. There you go. And then going to the formatting. Especially sa numbers, you have to format it depende sa <clears throat> kung anong format. <laughs> Not really, it's redundant, how everything makes me. So for column E, as you can see, the header is income. Meaning, pera ang pinag-uusapan natin. As of now, you can see na numbers lang siya. It doesn't look like it's money. 
kasi wala siyang currency, wala siyang decimal point whatsoever. So, what we're going to do is to format it in a way na nakikita na this is this column E is monetary value because what we are go what we are showing in column E is the data. And in order for you to do that, <clears throat> you just have to I just kung, kung buong column E mo is income ang ilalagay mo, then you can just choose all column E. So, ang mangyayari diyan, i-hover mo lang yung mouse mo sa E na letter and click on it. Matu-choose niya yung buong column E hanggang sa end yan. Yan. So, in the future, kung magpupot ka man ng, ng, ng numbers dito, naka-format na siya as you wish. So, let me do that again. Clinic ko si column E. And makikita mo dito, from the dollar sign until the 1, 2, 3 sign, dito tayo magpo-format ng numbers. So, kung gusto mong <clears throat> kung gusto mong i-format siya sa currency, kunwari, ang income nila is in US dollars, you just have to press this. Ito, ito na naka-dollar sign na to. And immediately, ang form niya is magiging US dollars. However, for example, it's currency, but you would like to choose a different currency, then there are more formats. You can just have, a, you, you just have to hover your mouse over to this button na naka, ang nakasulat 1, 2, 3, just click on it. Then you can choose whichever you want the format to be. More formats, kunwari yung currency niya, gusto mo ibang currency, um, Canadian dollar, Philippine peso, sabi natin. Ayan, kung Philippine peso, apply. Ganun yung lalabas. However, ngayon, it's US dollars. And uh, I think it looks better if naka-align to the left siya. So, let's change the alignment to that. Dito. Ka-alignment ka lang. Okay. So, in the future, if you're going to input numbers here, automatically, ang magiging format niya is currency in US dollars. Monetary value in US dollars. For example, I'll put here a value of 500,000 or 50,000. Pagka-enter ko, yan ang lalabas. So, that's how you use the number formats. There are different number formats depending, of course, so wait, masama si income. Depending on, of course, on the format of your numbers. Kung percentage, you can format it as a percent. E, for example, for this is only, click ko lang. So, ganyan siya. And then, itong dalawang araw na, itong dalawang to, it gives you the power to increase or decrease the decimal places. So, nuwari, it looks Parang yung decimal place niya is that low, eh, which is not really needed for your report, then you can decrease. Maging ganyan lang siya. Round it off. However, if you would need the exact value, kunwari, you would need two decimal places, then you can just um, click on it. Pagka-click mo ng isa, isa lang yung decimal place. Pagka-click mo ng dalawa, yan. Ganyan siya. Babalik po siya sa atak. Other formats, plain text, pag plain lang na numbers. Pag numbers with the decimal places, for percentage, for accounting, financial currency. Also, if you want the format to be a date, a time, a date and a time, and also the duration, kung kano ka na katagal. Ito ang nakalagay na Philippine Peso dito kasi ginamit natin. So, for example, kung you choose ka ng more formats at may ginamit ka na custom format, masisave na siya dito for future references. So, you can use it na mas madali. Yes, yeah, so it kind of looks neat, pero let's try to add borders para masa-separate sila. So, putting a border is different from underlining. Kasi, border yung parang sa, kasi if you, if you imagine as a whole, this is a table. And this imagine, this nights here, these are just imaginary nights. These are just grid nights. So first part ng lesson natin sa getting started, I showed you the few menu where you can see the grid lines. And if you click on it, ganito yung lalabas. Ganyan lang siya. So these are just imaginary lines. So if you would like it to be formatted in a way that it looks like a table, then you can add borders on it. And for you to do that, all you have to check is the menu bar. You can see here this. Um, Maka siyang window or a box with four, uh, ano ba, basta ganun. Pag nagkatingin mo yan, border, sabi na. 
you have to click on it and you have different options for adding a border. For you to add a border. Either lahat nagay mo ng border, ito ang first option. If you click on it, ganito yung lalabas. Let me just remove the view for the grid line so you can really appreciate it. How it looks like. How it looks like. So, you can do it that way. Or, kung gusto mo yung sa loob lang, pwede yung tsura niya. Oops. Pwede yung magiging yung tsura niya sa loob lang. If you prefer it, maybe sa gitna lang. Yan. If you also want to choose yung sa labas lang, Kung gusto mo naman is malagyan lang sa right side or sorry, left side. Hindi na yung malalagyan. Hindi makikita dito eh. Pero ba't siya? Nari for example ito. Gusto ko lang lagyan ng border sa left. Malalagyan na siya sa left. Or similar if you want the top. Kung gusto mo yung border sa taas, sa right side or sa lower side. So for example, we chose na lagyan ng border lahat. And then you decided na to remove the border is then you can choose this. And also, you have um, options sa borders. Kung gusto mong ganito lang siya kanipis, or kung gusto mong mas makapal. Okay. So, these are some of the options. So, let's see. Let me try adding a border na ganyan. Pero gusto ko mas makapal siya. Or dalawang times para magagamitan. And then, I just want it to be outer borders. Okay. Or... Gusto ko sa labas lang yung borders. Yan. Dotted. Or I want it to okay, look that way. It depends on your discretion. Okay. And then, gusto ko to. Yan. So, ganyan yung maging h -mark. Depends on your discretion, you can play around because there are a lot of options for you. You can also change the border colors if you want to be pink or something else. Pero if this is a report or this is something about your work, then it's still better to stay as professional looking as possible. Especially if this is a document. But unless it's a graphic art, a graphic that you are creating, then maybe you can create it in a different platform. Or you can do it here. It's up to you. <laughs> there. So that's how you can actually use the borders to make your table look better and neat. It looks neat. Here. Aside from borders, there is there other also other formats or other uh, helpers for you. Let me just remove this para mas madali kong mabigyan ng example yung next natin. Um, mas madali nyo ma-appreciate yung, yung phrase row or column kapag ang data mo is sobrang dami. So, let me copy and paste. Gawin ko lang siya sobrang dami. This very. Ayan. Kunwari, sobrang dami. Let's not just, let's not focus on the data, but let's focus on gano siya kadami ngayon. Wait. Use it natin. Kunwari, ganyan yung data mo. And then, if whenever you scroll down, for now, maybe it's easier for you to identify that this is an email, this is the title, pero sometimes you get confused. So you have to know, hmm, or you have to always see the header, or the call, or yeah, the header. And for this table, ang header is ito. And you want to see this header even if you're scrolling down. And for you to be able to do that, all you have to do is just to choose the header, or pwede mong piliin yung row ng header mo, which for this example, it's row 1. Yan. Pag pinili mo ang row 1, all you have to do is click number 1. Mapipili ang buong row 1 ng letter Z. Yan. Pagka-click mo ng row 1, punta ka sa view, and then hover your mouse to freeze, and you can choose how many rows you want to freeze. For this, since... Isang row lang ating header, ang i-freeze lang natin is one row. So what would happen here, since naka-freeze na si row 1, whenever you scroll down, you are still able to see the header, which is the name, email, company, title, income, and age. So hindi ka na malito. Mas lalo kung may first and last name, 
there are a lot of data and you need to really see the header for you to identify which one in particular is maybe the company, the person has name, something like that. Good. So this is how helpful freezing the, the row is. And it's also possible with a column. So for example, gusto mo if freeze your names. And again, balik ka sa view, freeze. Ang name, ang gusto mo lang is a name. So one column on it. So you just have to press on it. Pagka press mo, nakakita siya. So pagka mag scroll ka to the left, to the right, nakafreeze pa rin. And since nakafreeze pa din ang ating row 1, pagka up and down ang yung scroll, nakafreeze pa rin siya. So that's how neat and that's how useful freezing the column or the row is. Depending on your need, of course. If you need two columns to be frozen, para naka steady lang sila, it's possible. And similar with uh, freezing two rows or more. Okay. So for now, let's unfreeze the row. I mean, the column. Okay, sorry. Unfreeze the column. That's how you do it. That's how useful freezing a row or column is. Next one is text rotation. So as of now, ganito yung data natin. Pero si age kasi, ano lang siya, maliit lang yung space niya. Kasi ganyan lang yung numbers. So, para hindi ko makonsume, or maliit lang yung width na makonsume ko, we can change the alignment or the rotation of these headers. And dito mo siya tignan sa text rotation. So, for example, yung header mo, ito ang kasi yung preset, preset niya, nakaganyan lang siya. Kunwari yung header mo gusto mo nakaslan. Ganyan yung lalang. So, pwede mo bang i-adjust. Other options are nakatilt. Ito, nakatilt up. If you want nakatilt down, ganyan naman siya. If you want na pababa, ganyan yung lalabas. If you want na pataas, nakarotate up, ganyan. Pero kailangan, kailangan mong itilt din yung head mo magbabasahin. Kapag naka-rotate down naman, it's the opposite. Or if you want to adjust it on your own, there. Those are the, the other options. So for example, si age, gusto ko nakatilt lang siya para pwede kong i-adjust yung width ng column end. Ayan. So nakaganyan lang less your column yung nagagamit. At saka, you can also adjust the yung kapal ng row and column mo. Di ba kanina, I showed you how you can adjust the width of the column. And it's similar with row. You just have to um, hover your mouse dun sa gitna, pagitan ng 1 and 2 kung gusto mong i-adjust. At kaya nyo siya. Nalabas. Balik na natin sa normal. So, ganito ang normal niya. And there are also other options for the alignment itself din. Kung gusto mong nakababa, na nakadikit siya sa nakadikit siya sa border, okay na yung ganyan. Pero kung gusto mong nakadikit na siya sa cell, pwede mong i-choose yung middle. Diba? Mas maganda tignan. Kung gusto mo naman na nasa top siya, you can choose top. Okay. It's still on your discretion. Pero... For right now, kunwari ganyan, naka-middle, para mas maganda tingnan. Kasi header siya yun. So, I want it to be on uh, naka-middle. What else? So, that's how you, that's how you align. And, also, you can wrap text. Wrap text is useful if your text is so mahaba. Uh, let's make an example. Gamitin natin itong si Column D. Si column D, ang nakalagay dyan is title or the position of each person. So, si John, ang title niya is Chief Executive Officer. Si Audrey, ang title or position niya is Vice President of Operations. If I um, adjust the alignment, or the, sorry, not the alignment, but the width of column D, liliit siya, pero hindi ko makikita ang complete na position or title nila. But it's still possible for you. All you have to do is just to change the wrapping of the text. And in order for you to do that, dito pa rin tayo, makikita mo itong arrow na ito. Um, Pagka-hover mo, meron naman siyang, meron naman siyang label na mapapakita. Text wrapping. So right now, ang kanyang, ang, ang kanyang preset is mag-overlap siya or overflow siya. So kung walang data dito, makikita mo siya na nag-overlap. 
yung officer nag overlap sa D, column D, and column E. Similar with this one, if I, if I remove this amount, makikita mo na naka-overlap. That's the preset. However, if you want it to be shown, either you change the width para kumapal at makikita lahat yan, pero pag sobrang haba ng, ng information niya, you can just change the wrapping. Either you change it para magpunta siya sa next line. Pag pinili ko to, ganyan siya, di ba? Another option, magra-wrap siya. Pag pinili ko to, pupunta siya sa next line. O, magiging Similar with, kung nalagawin natin lahat, sa buong column D, naka-text wrap siya. So, ang mangyayari, yung hindi magkasya sa first line, pupunta siya sa second line. Para magiging two lines siya. Kung gusto mo naman na overlap or overflow, kung wala kang other information sa next na column, then you can use overflow. Pero kung hindi naman, kung nare, hindi naman importante na makita that clip para ganito. Hindi makikita. However, if you really need to see the uh, the data as you scroll over, then you can just wrap it. Which also looks neat. If you adjust, napapalitan yung wrap. There. So, those are some of the basic formatting that you can use whenever you are using spreadsheets. Hmm. Now, what we're going to talk about are some of the common formulas that you can use here in spreadsheet. There are a lot of formulas, pero we will start, for beginners, we will start with the common formulas. And this is the same data that we have used for our lesson two. Gonna then be the lesson three. So if you if you would actually check sa, ito, sa insert menu, punta ka sa function. Makikita mo dito lahat lahat na mga available formulas that you can use. Pero sa upper portion niya, you can see the most common formulas like sum, average, count, max, and min, which we'll talk about in detail. So, um, <clears throat> let's start with sum. Sum is mag add ka lang. So, for example, we would like to know the total income of this people. So, lagay ko siya dito. And, gawin na, go natin gold. So, I want to know the total income. Ito yung mga income nila. As is, pwede mo na actually makuha yung, yung total. As in yung sum. So, all you have to do is uh, choose the data. Tapos, pagpunta mo dito, put, uh, I want you to look at the lower left portion of your, I'm sorry, lower right portion of your screen. And you can see here the word sum. Ganun kaganda kasi automatic na siya. Pag, basta may data kang pinipili, magsasum siya mag -isa. For this, kung hindi mo naman siya kailangan na nailagay sa sheet mo, then you can just um, choose the data and then tinignan mo dito yung sum niya, yung total niya. So, it's 2,000. 589, I mean, 2,589,796 in total niya. However, if you would like it to be placed in your data or in your sheet, then we can use a formula. So, for you to start using a formula, kasi, di ba sa cell, either you can just put a plain text, a plain number, or you can use a formula. For you to add a formula, you need to always start with the equal sign. And pag lagay mo na equal sign, it indicates that you are starting with a formula. So here, what we want to know is the total income of John, Mark, Audrey, Ryan, Paul, and Andrew, and Carl. At ang total income nila is nasa column E. At since gusto natin malapitan ng total, we have to add all of their income hanggang pamitin natin function is sum, S-U-M. At ang kagandahan sa Excel, tutulungan ka niya while you are creating the formula. So, magbibigay siya ng mga, <clears throat> mga helpful tips, magbibigay siya ng mga pointers, ng mga, uh, ito, depending on the keyword that you are using, magbibigay siya ng mga suggestions. Yeah. So, there are two options for you um, to start. Kunwari, pag gusto mo gamitin na function is sum, you just have to uh, type S-U-M and then press tab. Pagka-press mo ng tab, automatically, meron ng open parenthesis. Ibig sabihin, 
yung nakalagay dun sa open parenthesis and close parenthesis, yun yung data na iaas. Pero, either you press tab or kung hindi naman, ilagay mo na yung open parenthesis. And that would, that would start yung mag and close siya sa data na gusto mo kaya. And for this, you would like to know the income of all of these people. So, all we need to do is just to choose the data that we need to add. So, here, we want to add all of this. So, what I am, I am doing, naka-press and drag ako. So, pagka-press ko kay um, cell E2, dinadrag ko siya until E8. Pikita ko siya dito. E2 until E8. So, meaning, we are adding the values from cell E2 until cell E8. That is why it is important for you to understand how to reference a cell. Diba? Ito, cell is referenced by first their column name and their and then their row number. Column name is E, row number is 2, this cell is E2, and so on. Since these are the values that I would like to add, pwede na akong mag-press ng enter immediately or if I want it to be in close, it is have close that I put there the close parenthesis, meaning I am ending that function na is a sum, and then you just have to press enter. And immediately, you get the total. That's the total income of these people, of these seven people. Okay. So, that's how you use the sum. Another, another common function that you can use is average. So, maraming palaman ng average income ng mga C7. Mga C-level to mga doon CEO, co-founder. Ah, actually, sa baba na yung PPA. Eh. Pero nilagay ko na siya sa C-level. CMO, the President, and the Chief Operating Officer. And it works similar with SAM. Pero instead of using the function SAM, this time what we're going to use is the function for average. Then, the function for average is, again, we'll start with an equal sign indicating that we are putting a formula for this cell. And then, we put the, the word average. Oops, sorry. Average. And then either you press tab or you add the open parenthesis. And then you choose the data that you need. Na ma-average. Ibig sabihin, ito yung average income na na-earn nila. Then you close it. And here. So that's how easy it is for you to use this formula. So, meaning, let's try to let's try to analyze these values. So the total income, ito yung lahat lahat, ito yung na earn ng mga tao ko. Lahat lahat. Pag average naman, ibig sabihin ito yung between the minimum and the maximum of what these people earn, yung kalagitnaan. Yun. Yung kag kalagitnaan ng mga nila. And we also have here maximum and minimum. Kunwari, sobrang daming numbers dito at hindi natin ma-identify which one is the maximum income, which one is the minimum income. So, we'll use a formula for that. So, within all of E, which one, ay, ano ang maximum income? Okay. And for that, again, we'll start with an equal sign. The function that we'll be using is max, max, and then the same data. So, dito sa data na to, sa lahat ng mga income na to, ano yung pinakamataas? Yun ang meaning ng max, max. So, pagka, tapos yan, yan. So, ibig sabihin, ang pinakamataas na income nilang tatlo, ay nilang pito, is 1,210,000 dollars. Yun. Siya ang pinakamataas. And, if you want to see the opposite or the minimum income, the function that we are using here will be min. I'm sorry, equal sign, M-I-N. Meaning, meaning the minimum value within that data. And the minimum value is 50,000. Yun yung pinaka-mababang income sa range of data. 
And this is also useful for our data age. We want to know sino ba ano ba ang ano pinaka ano ba ang pinaka matandang age sa mga C level na to. Let's try. Maximum. So now they want to know the um, maximum age. Yeah, dito tayo. Para mas maganda kasi pag magkaano sila. Magka-align sila. Para lang natin. So equals max open parenthesis and then the range of data. And then we close it. Okay, so pinakabatanda ang age niya is 56. Let's try the opposite. Minimum. Minimum age. So pag minimum naman, equal sign MIN open parenthesis the data or the range and then close it. So ang pinakabatanda ang age is 28 years old. Okay, so for our lesson for today, this is something really important, especially for referencing whenever you um, you make or you need to reference a cell, a sheet from the same spreadsheet or a sheet from a different file. So here, I'll give you an example of how you can reference each cell. So for example, ito yung pinaka first nating spreadsheet and what we need are all of this data. And to get the answer or to get this data, I mean to get the result for this, uh, for each of this data, ang ating raw data is galing sa ibang sheet, but within the same file. So dito siya, sa C level na, na, na sheet ng Linguist. So galing tayo sa report, pupunta tayo sa C level. Okay? So if you remember for our lesson about cell referencing, it's all about identifying the column letter and then the row number. So, so for, the, for example, to get this one, if I choose this cell, this cell is B2. This one is C2. And so on. Then and then, kapag mag reference ka from other sheets. And for this one, I'll show you on, uh, an example on how we can reference a cell from a different sheet. So, for example, we want to know the total income of these people. So, we'll get their income from all of them. Let's go back. Again, starting with the formula, you start with an equal sign. And since we're trying to add all of them, we will use the function stop. So, for you to be able to reference the cell, all you have to do, pag andyan ka na sa open parenthesis, ang iniisip kasi dyan eh, ng... Google Sheet is yung range of data na isa sa pangkila. So, pag andyan ka na, all you have to do is go to the next sheet where you are going to get the data. Okay, ito. Ayan, diba? Nakikita mo pa rin yung nakikita mo pa rin yung formula where you are starting. At least you'll get an idea. Parang alam mo na na, ah, okay, next start ako. Mag-sum ako ng ganyan value. At dito po kukunin. So, andito na tayo sa other sheet kung saan natin kukulin yung data. And all you have to do is again, just choose the range of data na isa sa akin. Yeah. So, kung makikita mo sa equation, nakalagay yung, ito yung name ng sheet, and then ito yung range within that sheet. So, C level is the name of the sheet. Ito siya. And then, yung range niya is yung pinili natin, which is ito. Yeah. So, pag enter mo, babalik ka dito at ganyan yung equation. Meet. And same with um, same with the others. Can I average? One to the average. Again, go to the sheet. Then choose the range. And then enter. Okay, maximum income naman. Again, we have max. The range. Enter. So, minimum, min, and then the range. So, each naman tayo, we just have to use max. And then this one, and then minimum, is the function minimum. Go to the sheet, 
and choose the range. That's how easy it is. So, ang kagandahan kasi niyan, since you properly reference each of these ranges, kung magbago man yung range nila, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You don't have to change the coordinates. Automatic siya. So, for example, palitan natin ito ng 58. Ang lalabas dito na maximum na age is 58. O kung papalitan natin ito ng hmm, 1,500,000 yung total income mapapalitan, yung average income mapapalitan, yung maximum income is at 1,500,000 1.5 million. Pwede siya. So, instead naman naman ito, then you can just use the function so it's easier for you. Or you can use the formula so it's easier for you. So, kapag magre-reporting ka na, doon ka lang sa data, sa raw data magkakalit. At automatically siya change the answer. So, kapag nagpagay ng header niya is C-level. So, that's easier kasi it's within the same file. Referencing within the same file. So, report at C-level sa isang file lang sila. Pero, ang tanong, paano mo yung reference or paano mo yung isang mga buckets from a different file? So, I got here a different file. Ginawa ko lang similar yung data. So, you'll get an idea. However, it's from a different file. So here, we are going to use a specific um, function na I have got sa early, earlier parts of this. So, pero this is very important if you're going to import data from a different file. But before you do anything else, <clears throat> you have to make sure that whenever you're going to use or you're going to get data from a different sheet, you check the sharing settings. It's better that the sharing settings is can edit or can view yan, para madali at malilink yung information na kailang. So this is how it works. Ito gawin natin. Ito lagyan natin siya para may C-level from test So ibig sabihin kukunin natin yung data from this, this. So, in order for you to do that and get the reference from a different file, the function that we're going to use within the formula is import range. So, again, we're going to use the formula. So, ang gagawin natin is equal sign sum kasi kailangan natin ng total income. And then, since it's from a different file, we're going to import the data from a different file. Import range. And then we'll get the spreadsheet URL. The spreadsheet URL, I want you to look here. Ito ang pinaka URL ng spreadsheet. However, what we will be needing for the formula for import range is this one. Ito po ang link niya. So that's between D and then slash, and then slash, and then edit. So, what's between them is this. Ito na yung kokopyahin mo, at siya lang ilalagay ko sa import range. So, yun ilalagay natin. Open quotation. Yung link. And then, you can already get the range. Which is E2 to E8. E2, 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 I think, sorry, I forgot, we need to identify the sheet, so kailangan natin, copy the sheet name, and then paste, dyan, with the exclamation point, And then the range. Again, dito tayo. From E2 to E8. So, E2 to E8. And then, close parenthesis. Another close parenthesis. And then, you wait kasi mo tulog. 
close quotation. Ayun. Sorry. It was a mistake. So, I forgot to add the close parenthesis para mas identify. So, let's go back. Himayin natin yung himayin natin yung, yung formula na ginamit natin. So, since what you want to know is the total income of these people dito, itong total neto, at gusto natin siya mailagay sa sa lead list sheet natin. What we started was the function sum. And then, within that function, open parenthesis, we use the function import range kasi i-import natin yung range of data from the different sheet. So, within, pag gamit mo ng import range, we use the function import range, open parenthesis, and then open quotation, the link of the spreadsheet. However, for the link of the spreadsheet, you don't copy all, you only copy a part of it. So, ito siya. Iba-iba ang link so, you have to make sure na the link na yung link na kakopyahin mo is between d slash and slash edit. So, anong in between nila? This one. And ang kakopyahin mo at siya ilalagay mo dito. And then, enclose it with a quotation. And then, to get another range, lagyan natin siya ng comma, meaning end. So, ang nangyari, import natin yung range from the sheet and from the uh, worksheet, which is sheet 1. Ito siya. So, you have to put the sheet name, sheet 1, and then you put the word, uh, the, uh, the symbol exclamation point. Tsaka mo ilalagay mo range. Ang range niya, since we need the income for all of them, is from E2 hanggang E8. So, from E2 to E8, you put E2 colon E8. Ang ibig sabihin din yan, from E2 to E8. And then you close it with a quotation mark para ma-enclose ito. You close it with the first closing parenthesis para ma-close ang import range. And then you close it with the last parenthesis para ma-completo itong data na isa sa. So, whatever changes here, magpapalit mo siya sa it's super easier for you. <clears throat> yeah. Next one, let's try another one. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to average the income from this. Again, what we need to do is start with a formula. Start with an equal sign. We use average, open parenthesis. I'm sorry. Yeah, open parenthesis and then open quotation. You copy the link. This is a, in, uh, ano siya, parang ID. Yan yung pinaka-ID niya. Parang maling. You paste it. You close it with a quotation mark. And then, comma. Kasi end. And then the sheet name, the worksheet name, which is sheet 1. You copy it and you paste it here. Exclamation point. And then the range is, again, from E2. Diba? Yung pag-reference natin. Column. <clears throat> column name, row number, E2 to E8. E2 until E8. Close quotation mark, close parenthesis, and then close parenthesis. Sorry, may nanis ako. Import range. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Import range. Yun. You get it? So the average of the imported na import na range from this sheet, from this Google spreadsheet, and within this Google spreadsheet is the sheet 1. Within sheet 1 is the range E2 to E8. Yeah. Similar with the rest. Let's try another one para matanggal yung confusion kasi nakalimutan ko yung import range. So again, maximum income. Let's use the function max. And since we're going to import from a different file, Let's use import range, open parenthesis, open quotation, copy the link, paste, and close with a quotation, add a comma sign, meaning na end, open quotation, the name of the worksheet, which is sheet 1, 
space, exclamation point, and within sheet 1, the range which is from E2 to E8. E2 until E8. Close the quotation. Para mag-close ito. Ibig sabihin within that one. Close it with a parenthesis para mag-close yung import range. And then close with another parenthesis para mag-close itong buong ito. And that's where you get maximum income. You see the difference kasi, di ba, pinalitan natin yung maximum income dito na 1.5M as compared dito na it's still 1.2M. So, may pagkakaiba dyan. Hmm. Nakikita mo naman, the same yung import range na ginagamit natin. So, it doesn't really, you don't really have to, you don't really have to always go back and reference here. Pwede mo na siyang kopyahin dito, and you just have to change the function. Diba? So, pwede mo kopyahin yan, and then, sa minimum income, you just put the function, equal sign function, and then, and minimum, tab, or open parenthesis, and then, i-copy mo na lang. So, you don't have to go back and forth from the other sheet. Yeah. So, this, dito naman sa H na part, ibang range naman. So, we are going to use the range sa H. So, sa F column tayo. You can still copy. Pwede mo pa rin kopyahin to until here and then you stop. So, again, I go. You have to be careful kasi minsan pag within the within the within the formula. One and one parenthesis. One and one parenthesis. Ayan. Within the formula kasi pag nagalaw mo masisira or may namiss kang may namiss kang parenthesis may nadagdag ka so, so you always have the double check so sa maximum age naman ang papalitan natin is yung range niya hindi na tayo sa income sa age na tayo so this time again we use the function mass import range the link the sheet and then we are using a different range and it's from F2 to F8 so F2 until F8. Close quotation, close parenthesis, close parenthesis. And whenever you open a quotation or open a parenthesis, you should always partner it. So as you can see, we open a quotation and we close it. Similar here, you always close what you open. You open a quotation, you close it. Meaning this is the specific range. Partner, partner yan lagi. This is, ito, itong quotation na to, ang partner niya is ito. And then the last, the last close parenthesis, ang um, partner niya is yung pinakawalang parenthesis. And then, from here, we can copy this one. And then we can change the function to make up. And then, space. There you go. So that's how you can reference a cell within the same sheet, from a different sheet, or from a different file. From a different from a, from the same sheet kasi madadagdag so, because you can just use whatever cell reference they are. So for example, I want to get the total income for C level. I just have to reference B2. At mahuhuha ko na yung data. However, if I want to to reference it from a different sheet within the same Google spreadsheet, then I just have to go here and choose whatever cell. Pero, if you're referencing from a different spreadsheet, then you use the function import range. And again, let me highlight it. You need this part only. So, if you can see, yung pinaka-link niya is ito yung kompleto. Pero, disregard mo to at saka ito. Kasi ang kailangan mo, ito lang. Yung nasa loob lang na d slash at slash n. Yun lang yung kailangan. And to make sure that it's working properly, the sharing settings should be anyone with the link can edit. Just to make sure. Especially kapag yung pinagagamitan mo is you are sharing it from different people and there are some other changes that you need to do, then it's better na naka-set yung proper sharing settings. So that's how you can reference cells. So this time, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to teach you, is how to use sort and filter. 
So how you can sort and filter your data, especially if you would like to see them in alphabetical order, if you want to sort them from A to Z, for the dates you want the earliest on top or the latest on top, for the amount you want the highest amount or the lowest on top. And then later on, we'll also talk about filters and how they are useful for you, especially if you would like to view a specific category that was so daming data. So I have here a sample data for sales. So this is my header for one and the client date close. I already formatted it para is a date. I have the channel, the service, the currency, which is either in Canadian dollars or in US dollars and the setup piece. So setup piece. So the setup piece I already sort I already formatted the numbers to be in currency. So the first thing that we're going to do is try to use sorting. Sorting is very helpful if you would like to sort your to sort your data. And, and it all depends on how you want it to be sorted. Kunare, you want to sort it in a way that the client mo is alphabetically, alphabetically ordered from A to Z. So all you have to do is just to choose the range. Marami siyang range. Either you hover your mouse until column F and until row 21. Ang madaling option yan, di ba nasa A1 pa na cell? You can use your keyboard. Just press Control Shift, arrow to the right. Big sabihin, lahat ng values sa row mo na may laman, choose niya. And then, habang naka-Control Shift ka, Diba? Again, that's it. Control Shift, arrow to the right. And then, naka hold pa rin yung Control Shift, arrow pa baba, arrow down. Yeah. So, meaning, lahat ng may laman na pa baba is it choose niya. So, that is your range. So, either you hover your mouse over to the complete range, or you can use your keyboard shortcuts, Control Shift, right, down. There you go. So this is the data that we will be using for us to sort. So for example, what I want to do is to sort it in a way na yung sa client view ko naka alphabetical order siya. And for you to do that, all you have to do is go to data, sort range, click on sort range, and then ito yung pinaka range mo, A1 to F21. You tick this box if your data has a red header. Tayo meron tayong header. Yung header natin is 01, client, date, close, channel, service, currency, etc. So, ang gusto ko sa client is nakasort siya from A to Z. If that's what I want, all you have to do is just choose client and then A to Z and then sort. So, as you can see here, it's sorted alphabetical. And if I want it to be reversed, pwedeng i-sort ko ulit siya. And this time, it's from Z to A. There you go. Kung iba naman yung gusto mong isort, for example, let's sort the date closed. Um, I want na mauna ko makikita yung closed later. So it's from Z to A. Okay. So the most recent closed deals or closed deals with the client uh, were was in August. It was with client DC. Then yung next July. So, nakasort na siya. From the latest to the earliest. And you can, I can also do it the other way. Around. So, for example, I want to sort it na don't forget how to always click on the box. Sa data has a header. If you have a header. So, if I want it to be from the earliest to the latest, then I'll choose A to Z. And yun na magpapakit. Yeah. And similar with this one. Kunwari, ang gusto ko makikita yung setup fee na babayaran sa akin. Gusto ko makikita yung fee na kababa patas. So again, I'll choose the range. Data, sort range. Setup fee. Gusto ko makikita yung fee na kamataas muna. So it's from Z to A. So makikita ko yung fee na kamataas na setup fee was $25 from OL. They close. So that's how important and that's how useful um, sorting is. So depending on your need, so if you would like to see it 
maybe depende kung ang gusto mo makikisang sa client view, day close, depende sa data mo. And depende kung, ba, kung anong gusto mo ba. And aside from sorting, another very useful tool is filtering. Filtering is super important especially if you have a lot of data and hindi mo makikita yung mga gusto mo makikita agad siya. Kasi it's overwhelming to see a lot of data. Right? So here, all you have to do if you want to filter is just move. If you see this button, na panel siya, you just have to click on it. Pero better na you choose the range or kahit yung header lang yung part. And then you click on it. So pipiliin niya pa rin yung range na may laman na data. So for example, gusto kong i-filter para makita ko lang yung service. So may services na management ko. So, Ang gagawin mo, di ba naka-set naka up na yung filter? All you have to do is click on this. Sa right nung header mo is may arrow down. Click mo lang yan. Antik mo yung consulting and creative. So, ang naka-check lang is management. And then you click OK. You will see all the management services that you have as well as other information. And similar if you want to see other services like consulting. I want to check creative. Yeah. But if I want every I want to see all the select. Dito naman ko lang gusto ko yung sa US dollars lang. Yung earn ko in US dollars. Then I'll just filter it that way. I want to see it in Canadian dollars only. Yeah. Ang kagandahan din nito, you are able to save these filters for future use. So for example, let's try to for example, I want to filter so what I can see only are the website. All my clients that came from my website. So, na filter ko na yan. Balik ka dito and sa katabi niya, may arrow down. I-press mo lang yan. And then, you choose create new filter or save as filter Sorry, save as filter view. So, ang mangyayari niyan, mas save na to as your filter view. And to be able to save it, this way, I'll uh, save filter. And then, you can change the name. So, for example, all of these slides I had came from my website. So, I'll change it to website. So, what would happen here? For example, if we turn it off, you can go back and then choose that. And then we can turn off filter. Para na mabasa. So since I already saved the filter, I'll just have to go back to this drop down. I already saved two. I saved one earlier. Ito yung sinate natin. So we have web website. Pag clinic ko yan, ang makikita lang dito, yung nasave kong filter for the name website. Meaning, all the chat, all my clients that came from the website, and then I want to show. Another filter I created was consulting. So all the services I offer in that consulting now. Yeah. And then look back. Let's try creating another filter. Let's go back to non. And then create a filter. So for example, I want to only see my sales in US dollars. Good. Save as filter. And this one, I'll name it as US. Normal view, it's your normal view. Niya. Gusto kong immediately, gusto kong makita yung sales ko in SD. Ganyan siya. It's easier. Very good. So, for example, you're already filtering. Pero gusto mong makunari, nakafilter siya lahat. Filter. So, and you want to go back now, hindi na siya na filter. All you have to do is click this. It will turn off the filter so you can see all the data that you use. There. So that's how useful using filters. Kung gusto mo makakita ng specific data, then you can use filter. If you want to sort your data from highest to lowest, from lowest to highest, or alphabetical order, or maybe from <coughs> earlier to latest or latest to earlier, then that's when you use sort. So 
sort dito mas sa data. So, parang pwede ko ba ito create ng filter? Or hindi ko na mismo. Sa bottom. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next video. Google Spreadsheets Intermediate Tutorial.